Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Melissa, and I'm here uh, on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Friday. On Mondays, I talk about two. Mondays and Wednesdays, I talk about two crime and a little bit different topics. And then on Friday, I talk about children, missing children. One of my uh, main main thing that I love to do. I love to talk about true crime, but I also I wanted to put a little bit more on my videos talking about missing children because they do need a voice. So if you like any of those topics or any interesting on that, go subscribe and also hit that bell so you can be notified every time I upload. Um, got my nails done today. You can see how beautiful. Like, like, like my nails. But let's go ahead and get started today. Um, video is interesting. I'm actually going to do my first talked about innocent um, people that have gotten or in prison um, when they're innocent or have a die on death sentence and being proved innocent after they are already gone. So let's go get it started. But first, let's talk. Let's do my reading of the day. I just don't turn into a bitch overnight. It took years of people letting me down. Passing me, pissing me off, and dealing with idiots to get this good at it. So, if that resonates with you, it resonates with me too. So, let's go ahead and get started. So, today I will be talking about my first per innocent person, and the name is Carlos de Luna. On December 7th, 1989, Carlos de Luna, a young Latino man, was executed for the 1983 murder of Wanda Lopez, an employee at a gas station in Corpus Christi, Texas. Texas, despite maintaining his, his innocence, he was just 27 years old. At his trial, prosecutor dismissed Mr. de Luna's claim of an alternative suspect, Carlos Hernandez, whom he instead had committed the murder. A starting that Mr. Hernandez was a pet pet suspect whom Mr. De Luna had fabric, fabricated. Mr. De Luna was later convicted and sentenced to death legally based on eyewitness misidentification. The prosecution description of Mr. Hernandez is now the title of a deeply disturbed documentary which premiered at the Triple Film Festival on June 14th and is set for release on Netflix on September 30th. Which I have not seen. I should just look at it and see when if it's already on Netflix. I haven't seen it. The partner draws from a series of interviews, including those with Mr. De Luna, siblings, his trial attorney, prosecutor, and eyewitness, casting tra traumas, doubt on Mr. De Luna's con conviction, and revealing a new disturbing evidence that points to innocence. It follows a reinvestigation into Mr. De Luna's claim about Mr. Hernandez by Colombian law professor Jimmy Limbia and his team, who later documented it, their compressive finding in a book titled The Wrong Carlos, an article in, Colonia, in the Colombia, Colombia Human Rights Law Review and online. The documentary presents a dining portrayal of the United States criminal legal system, which has heavily disrespected both members of the Latino community and people living in property. Ms. Serona was one of the three children raised by a single mother in a low-income neighborhood of Corpus Christi, where killings as, as fights, fit sites were common and where poor residents were too really charged with capital murder, convicted and sentenced to death with the little, if any, legal representation. The bottom also headlights this sharpness of the investigation, including law enforcement, Failure to look into a visible alternative suspect in the unreliability of eyewitness information. The truth, Mr. De Luna case was on that at all the telegate sign of many wrongful convictions. On the night of February 4th, 1983, Mr. Lopez, a 24-year-old employee at Sydney Germer, Cigarno Sharp Rock Gas Station, called police to report a suspicious individual with the knife. While on the phone with the 911 dispatcher, Mr. Lopez attempted to give the individual who she described as his Hispanic money in effort to get him to leave the station, conceiving in store seven, seven, seven seconds in the car, she let out a scream. And this is her. Law enforcement arrived at the scene shortly after they find to find witness tending to Mr. Lopez. 
who had Mrs. Lopez, who had been stabbed twice. The witness described Mrs. Lopez's attacker to an officer in a misshapen Hispanic man in a flat jacket and a gray sweat sweatshirt. A police began their manhunt for a suspect matching this description. A couple nearly told the same officer they had seen a man in a different outfit running about two blocks away from the gas station. The second description was shared with other authorities as they as that of a second possible suspect. In mid in a critical manhunt for the two men described by witness, police received multiple callers from neighborhood residents about a man hiding underneath a pickup truck. Police followed the tip and found Mr. De Luna, whom witness later defined as Mrs. Lopez's murder, doing a highly investigation identification proxy. Okay, guys, so this is the guy. This is the guy that was the and Carlos. He was the innocent one, and this is the one that actually committed the murder. Um, if the more you hear the story, you'll understand. They kind of look alike in a way, but Carlos had more hair than he did. Um, so they took him, and he was the innocent man, and he was the one who actually committed the murder. As a, as a trial in July of 1983, Mr. De Luna insisted that Mr. Lopez had been, Mrs. Lopez has been the murder by his acquaintance. Carlos Hernandez, but prosecutor rejected Mr. Luna claim without connecting it throughout a search for Mr. Hernandez instead. They accused Mr. De Luna of blaming the murder on a penitent person. The jury eventually sided with the prosecution, convicted Mr. De Luna, and sent him to death. Despite Mr. De Luna's sequence appeals, the court held his conviction and death sentence established, reaffirming that Mr. Hernandez did not assist. In 1989, Mr. De Luna died by lethal injection. Evidence uncovered years after Mr. De Luna's execution reveals not only that Mr. Hernandez assisted, but he was well known to police and prosecutor at the time of the trial. The pendant argues that for Mr. De Luna, this is a limited miscarriage of justice. Death, ha, de date has shown that there are real risks of execution people who are innocent in the United States. Since 1973, 185 people who had been wrongfully convicted and sentenced to death in the USA have been not exact in not created according to Death Penalty Information Center, including innocent project clients Clement Aguilera, Raldo Cruz, Alejandro Fernandez, and about 60% of those in the center were either black or Latinos. In discrediting the discrimination application of the death penalty against black and brown people, at least two of the center were Spanish speaker with the limited understanding of English that made it difficult for them to quality defend themselves in court. Other had limited access to their court residents in quality preservation. And like Mr. De Luna, some innocent project clients have been executed without fair chance to prove their innocence. In 2002, in 2000, in 2000, Claudia Jones was executed in Texas for the 1989 murder of a liquor store owner, Alan Hirgan, Hirgana, Mr. Jones, Convicted largely reset on a single piece of evidence, a stand of hair that was found on the counter near Mr. Hilaga's body. Mr. Jones' co defendant also testified against him, but later signed an ineffective claim that he had testified after being threatened with the death penalty. Nearly a decade after Mr. Jones executed execution, sorry guys, execution. DNA testing requests by Innocent Project reveal that the stand, standard of hair did not belong to Mr. Jones, raising serious doubt about his guilt. In 2004, Cameron Todd Whit Willing was executed in Texas after being convicted for a 1991 murder of his three daughters by erasing Mr. Willing's conviction was based purely on the testimony of a forensic science expert who determined that the fire had been intentionally set as the jailhouse informant had also claimed that Mr. Wingen had confessed to the crime. Following Mr. Grimming's execution, however, 
fight independence leading er arrows experts assembled by the innocent project along with the investigating report by the chicago tribune found that the scientific analyze that had been used in mr wigan trial was inevitable an arson expert hired by the texas for basic science commission also came to the same conclusion in other cases sally ali died by lethal in infection in tennessee in 2006 by mr ali had been convicted in the in the 1988 1985 rape and murder of marie lance Kerper, susan marie collins Mr. Ali intentionally denied and wrote in Mrs. Collins' death, but eventually signed a statement admitting to the murder, which he said was coerced. The details of the statement conducted aspects of the crime scene and autopsy. More, more, moreover, a witness description of the suspect did not match Mr. Ali's appearance. Mr. Ali was executed just years before the Tennessee Supreme Court ruled that the state post conviction DNA status should have allowed testing on a piece of evidence found at the late 1985 crime scene, including a pair of men underwears believed to have been worn by the attacker. Had testing been done, Mr. Ali would have had a strong proof of his innocence. The fight against capital punishment. The panel would depend. 10 will be released nationally in July 2, which also marked the 45th anniversary of Gray v. Georgia, a case in which the U.S. Supreme Court ruled in a 7-2 decision that the imposition of death sentence does not qualify as a cruel, unusual punishment. Prohibited by the 8th and 14th abandons in the USA Constitution, the Supreme Court observed that the concussions and ridiculous use to the death penalty when employed carefully may be prohibited in criminal cases where the defendant has been convicted of deliberate killing someone. Yet, as Mr. De Luna case clearly understood the death penalty in fact has been careless and unfairly applied, according to 2020 date from the NACP mm -hmm. Legal Defense and Education Fund apparently in 2006 in and separated people are currently on death row. More than 50% of those of those people are black and Latins. Furthermore, a report from the Death Penalty Information Center shows that not only are black people overspread in death rows across the USA, people con convicted of killing black people are less likely than people convicted of killing white people to face the death penalty. Given these sterling Taste Hold on, guys, because I don't know what the hell. Okay, given these tiny statics, we cannot ignore the radical disappearances and applications of capital punishment. The release of the pattern comes at a time where the country has been moving away from the death penalty. Last year, for instance, saw further education than any year in the past three decades. In March, Virginia became the first southern state to allow it to use. We encourage you to watch the pattern and share your thoughts and reactions on social media, and we hope that you will jo join with us witness an innocent former prosecutor, retired judge, civil rights organization, faith groups, and other prosecutor president joe biden to commute the sentence of 46 people current on federal federal death row so that is the story of carlos de luna i personally do believe in the death penalty but i believe it depends on the crime you committed for me i feel like if you kill a innocent child um if you kill an innocent um grandparent or or grandma I think you deserve the death penalty because you are killing people that are that are not willing to fight back that are not never done anything wrong to you or just you know or just innocent people that cannot fight back babies cannot fight back um you know a grandma and a grandpa cannot fight back so if you took their life then your life should be taken as well you should not be breathing the same air as everybody else i don't think that's fair um that's how i believe in the death penalty 
I think death penalty should, should be given depending on the type of crime and that is the crime for me if you kill a baby um or you kill a grandma um i'm i'm gonna add if you kill a pregnant woman as well i'm gonna add that as in there throw that in there too um but we do need to open our eyes and um you know and have and realize that these detectives need to do their job the right way and make sure that they got the right person this man lost his his life when he shouldn't have have not lost his life because the detective did not want to do their the right the job the right way and um and get the right person and an innocent person lost their lives for that um if any of the de luna family sisters i do um want to say i hope that y'all um that he's resting in peace and you know he's in heaven looking down at y'all and knowing that he is innocent and and that he was probably he was part you know he's finally everybody knows the truth and and everybody and even to those people that did not believe that it wasn't him they now they now know the truth um also before i end this video i know this is like out of character but i do want to say rest in peace and um to bat bob sabbath from full house um, that was my dad, my TV dad. I cannot believe he passed away. 22 and 2. Y'all could kiss my motherfucking ass. I don't know what the fuck is wrong with y'all. But y'all took my dad away. Um, I am actually watching A Full House now on HBO Max. Um, just to um, remember him and how funny he was and how good of a dad he was through, through these, you know, to those three girls, a single dad. Um, but yeah, um, I hope that I am so give his family and friends um and i'm sorry for your loss and and i hope that y'all can make it through this this hard time um i will see y'all on wednesday besitos